I'm very pleased to be among you and to discuss the current situation in Lebanon and in the Arab region. To start with, we cannot really talk about Lebanon's problems and difficulties without looking at the broader regional picture. Today, we have to admit that the Arab region is at a very dangerous crossroads. Our region is facing unprecedented turmoil and troubles. Strong states like Iraq and Libya collapsed and might be divided into different sub-states. Other countries like Yemen and Syria are facing civil wars. The modern Arab states were established after the collapse of the Ottoman Empire and after the withdrawal of the French and the British from our region. What we don't know yet is the structure and identity of the new states that will emerge in the region. The announcement of an autonomous area in northern Syria a couple of days ago is a negative indicator that our region might be heading towards more disintegration and fragmentation where national states are being replaced by ethnic and sectarian states. As for Lebanon, we are facing many challenges that are linked to the crisis in Syria, keeping in mind that the Syrian crisis entered its sixth year. The Syrian crisis affected Lebanon politically, socially, economically, and in terms of security. I can classify these challenges under three important themes. The deadlock in the functioning of our constitutional institutions, the Syrian refugees crisis, and the challenges of terrorism and extremism. <coughs> the first theme, today Lebanon hosts 1.2 million Syrian refugees. We witnessed in three years a 25% increase in our population. We have 232 refugees for every 1,000 Lebanese. Our annual economic losses because of the Syrian crisis is 11.3% of GDP. Most of the Syrians live in areas considered poor in Lebanon. So now Syrian and Lebanese are partners in deprivation. The refugees crisis affected all Lebanon sectors and infrastructures, especially education, environment, health, and electricity. For example, because of the Syrian refugees crisis, we are witnessing 20% increase in air pollution, 14% increase in wastewater, and 30% increase in solid wastes. The number of prisoners increased, increased by 26% in the Lebanese prisons because of the Syrian crisis and Syrian refugee crisis. The second th theme, the political deadlock in Lebanon. This challenge is precisely pointed to by the vacuum of, in the presidency inside Lebanon. Since May 2014, the presidency has been vacant. The Lebanese president, as you know, is the only Christian elected president in the Middle East and in the Arab region. We as future movement consider electing a president as the main priority. Without a president, our political system cannot function. The current government, which was formed in February 2014, is barely functioning. The parliamentary elections 
have been postponed twice since 2013. And now we are hoping to have the municipality election next May. We are stressing on this point as a party and as a government. Our leader, Prime Minister Saad Hariri, launched an initiative last November in which he proposed electing Member of Parliament, Slaiman Frangiyi, who is a member of the opposing political alliance called 8 of March as a president. We expected that other groups meet us halfway and accept this historical compromise. For us, we need a president even if we don't share the same ideas and positions. At least we can disagree within the institutions, not, at, not outside as it's happening today. It is clear that Iran, through Hezbollah, does not want a president in Lebanon. Iran and Hezbollah do not want a president for different reasons. As an example, they want to keep Lebanon a hostage in the current regional crisis. For them, Lebanon is another card they can use. They can use it as a bargain like Yemen, Syria, and Iraq. Also, Hezbollah is attempting on changing the structure and the composition of the current system that emerged with the Ta'if Accord and this is very dangerous and it may go to another a new civil war in Lebanon if they want to continue in this behavior. The result of this vacuum is the absence of accountability. Lebanese interests are being threatened and ministers are taking decisions and voting in international and regional meetings against the historical interests of the Lebanese state, as the Lebanese Foreign Affairs Minister did recently in the Arab Summit and Islamic Summit. And this was not coordinated with the government. These uncoordinated decisions affected our relationship with several Arab states. The third theme, terrorism and extremism, challenges. This challenge that we are facing is uh, a day-to-day day -day challenge, like what's happening uh, these days in Turkey. And here we should, uh, uh, we hope for the martyrs who died today in the suicide bomb uh, in Ankara, and we hope for Turkey to be in peace and to try to avoid and to catch all the sleeping cells that want to do uh, uh, these suicide bombs and kill the innocent people. Terrorism, as we see today, is a global threat. As we saw in Egypt, Paris, Mali, Burkina Faso, Tunisia, Lebanon, uh, Ankara, uh, Istanbul today, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, uh, uh, one week ago, uh, no country is immune from the threat of terrorism. In other words, terrorism and combating terrorism is uniting the world. The Lebanese security agencies succeeded in conducting successful security operations and the preemptiveness operations. These operations managed to dismantle many sleeping terrorist cells. The Lebanese experience in this issue is very important to highlight and can be described as more successful than many other countries, especially Iraq and Syria now. Because of the support and endorsement of future movement and our leader Saad al-Hariri, in the fight against terrorism. Future movement, the only one of the few democratically elected political party that represent 
to the moderate Sunni in the Arab region is in the lead supporting and providing political cover for the effort of fighting extremism. This is something important to highlight. I would like to thank you again for this opportunity to address our challenges, and I am looking forward of hearing your views and comments. A special thank for our friends in the AG Party for their hosting and all their help they are doing for the future movement and for Lebanon. And Mr. President Erdogan is in the heart of all the Lebanese. Thank you.